As with all my reviews guys, this is my own personal opinion. This is purely based on the experience and usage of the kit I am reviewing today. This video will be cut up into several sections to ensure there's as much information as you guys need to know about the kit I'm reviewing today. If you guys feel like I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. And also, if you guys have a different experience or opinion in the kit, please let me know once again because I'd love to hear your guys' side of things. Now, for today's kit review. This is the Jackal Alpha Rifle. This is made by Neutral for the Delta Line series of rifles. In today's review, I'm gonna be going over this rifle in particular. However, because all the internals are the same for all the Delta series lines of rifles, I'm basically gonna be covering them all. So if you guys are looking at buying this rifle or any of the Delta series rifles, performance wise, I'm gonna be covering all bases. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's review. I hope it gives you all the information you need to know about whether or not you do or don't want to buy this rifle because essentially all you're paying for between the rifles are the aesthetics, which I'll go over later. But until we get to that part, enjoy today's review, and remember, if you're enjoying my content, leave some love and a sub. Now, let's get on with the Jackal. Let's go over the aesthetics of the gun. So, starting off with wear and tear. I've had this gun for over a year, and the paintwork is still there in its pretty much near pristine condition. There are a few exceptions, of course, the magwell here has got a bit of metal showing where obviously the magazines have rubbed off the paint and the fire selector is starting to go a bit silver. Beyond that, after a year of usage, there is literally no paintwork damage at all. It's still all there. Now this does come in black as well, so if you guys want to choose between one of the two colours, you can do so. Beyond that though, the paintwork, it's just, it's still there. It's, it's going to last you. That's a good thing. For me anyway, if you like, like I say, if you like the wear and tear look, you have to do it yourself. Going on to the markings of the gun. The markings are very basic to any AR model. You've got your safe, automatic and semi-automatic markings on the side and where the fire selector is. You probably can't see them on the camera, but they're just around obviously the fire selector. Basic to any AR model. And the white symbols here are just the neutral markings themselves. So the company logo, the name of the rifle, etc. Beyond that, there's nothing special going on. So if you were looking for the authentic markings of, you know, of the M4s, of the of the AR rifles, there aren't any, it's just a company logo and that's about it. Going on for the general aesthetics like the handguard is, for example, um, the handguard is a, called a URX handguard. Where you can see these bolts here, you can actually detach them and add covers or extra rails if you so wish. It has a crane stock, which is just here. You can add your batteries to that, obviously that's where your batteries go. And you can probably exchange it out as well as you see fit, but I'll probably stick to it because that's where the battery, like I said, the battery goes. So if you want to exchange it for something else, you're going to have to find somewhere to put the battery and that might be a bit tricky. And what I think is really cool about this rifle, and the thing I like most about the aesthetics of the rifle is when you get it, it comes with these flip up sights. And obviously you've got your front one here as well. And they're detachable. Which means if you guys buy another rifle and want to use your iron sights, you can literally detach these and put them onto the next rifle. I keep these around for me just for these, you know, occasionally where the CQB, for example, where my scope may get damaged by being shot. So I put the iron sights on and also for bad weather because the rain and the moisture gets into the scope and um, gets in the way of me shooting, essentially. So, um, yeah, that's the overview of the aesthetics. It's a very, very pretty gun. I like it. But um, it is basic AR model stuff as well. So if you take away the handguard, there's nothing special going on. When you add the handguard, that's where the looks come into it. And that's what you're buying with any of the Delta series rifles. It's the looks of the rifle. I'm now going to go over to Combat UK just to show off all the other rifles. So you guys know what you guys are buying when you do go, if you do go, to buy the Delta Line series of rifles.
Come on. Huh? One of them, I've got the guy that ran for the flag. Let's talk about the feel, the weight and the handling of the gun. Now I'll talk about its general feeling just to begin with. As you can tell, this is a standard AR model rifle, which means nothing special is really going on here. Obviously you've got your stock here, it's an extended stock, uh, it's got a rubber pad here. Uh, the grip here is, is a basic grip with basic texturing, so nothing special is going on. I actually like that though because it means it basically suits all hands. And without gloves there's nothing uncomfortable about it either, it doesn't cut into your hands, it doesn't get uncomfortable, neither of your hands get nice and sweaty, it's got enough texture there so you don't lose grip. So generally speaking, holding and the feeling of the gun is, yeah, it's fine. It's nothing bad about it, there's just nothing special about it either, but it is an AR rifle, so... Yeah, it, it, that's that's a good thing. Talking about the weights next, uh, holding it in one hand is a very, very balanced rifle. This is the stock inwards as well. If you pull it out, it's a little bit heavier on this side, but that's because the, the stock's obviously outwards. But um, yeah, it's a very, very well-balanced rifle. It feels quite light to me, although there was that one girl that disagreed with me that one day. Put them, because I can't, this one's too heavy. So yeah, according to other players that have told me this, with all the other attachments it's actually a little bit heavy. So I've got my I got my LSAT scope or the I believe it's called the Phantom, WE Phantom Scope. I've obviously got my bipod grip which I use and I have my camera. So maybe with all the extra attachments, it's a little bit heavier than you might like. But as it is stock, it's a fairly well weighted beast. Going on to gun manipulation, so you've got your uh, functions here, so your safety, your semi. You full auto. You can reach those all fine. All fine. You've got your mag release. Again, that's just within finger reach, as it should be. And then over here as well, you've got your. This pushes the hop up unit, which I'll go over later. Hop up unit cover forward, so you can press that and it shoots forward. So yeah, again, basic AR stuff. The extended stock will go into four different locations, fully extended, and then just bit by bit clicking in. So that's number two. That's number three. That's number four, and that is that fully in. So actually five different locations. So you've got plenty of leeway on how you know how long you want to push it forward or back. I usually push it forward and back when I'm going into close quarter combat. Um, obviously with people with longer arms, shorter arms, etc. Obviously they'll move the stock as they see fit to be comfortable with. Uh, this is where it gets a bit different though. There are no rails on this gun. Here's the good side to that. Holding it without gloves is very, very comfortable. I know I'm holding them now with gloves, but it's a very smooth surface. It, it's, it's comfortable to hold. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you can also always hold it by the magwell as well. Some people do. And if you want to add a grip, there is a rail at the very top to do so. Now, here's the downside to that. Because there are no rails, you can't add grips to this. It's just impractical. And as I said before, you can add a grip here. Now, look at my arm. My arm is nearly fully extended, which means if you did add a grip, it would strain your arm to quite an extent, and it has done with me. That's why I have a bipod grip, so if I want to use it as a grip, I can, or just deploy the bipod and be done with it. But um, yeah, you're not going to add anything under the barrel of the rifle. You can buy rails that st uh, stitch onto this, but um, yeah, beyond that, you're, you're going to be reserved to holding it like this by the magwell or again by the grip. So that's the kind of downside to it, but um, it, would you call it a design flaw? No, simply because they have other rifles in the Delta series which do have rail attachments, so it's not a design flaw, it's just the design for the Jackal. But um, otherwise, handling of the gun is very basic, it's still an AR style model, so nothing special is going on like I said at the start, so, but yeah, nothing bad really either, just the lack of rail rails that you can use for attachments. Let's go over the magazines now. When you first get your rifle, you'll be given a high cap magazine. Obviously that means it has a wheel on there, it will have a little flap where you can put the bullets in. That's about 500 rounds. 
This is a mid-cap magazine. Now, I sold my high cap off, so I can't really show it to you guys. But this is a, a, a mid-cap magazine, and it also doubles up as a low-cap magazine, as I will now show you. So at the bottom here, as you may see on the camera, there's a tiny little Allen screw. Get your Allen key, and you just unscrew it. Now, the flap on the bottom doesn't actually come off. That's a mistake I made when I first bought this, was trying to get the flap off. It, it doesn't come off. The cover, as you might expect from like a, a WE M4 mag, for example, it doesn't come off. This actually slides out in one go. So, just take the top of the magazine, between your fingers, and... There you have it. Now, as you can see here, there are two, obviously you've got all the screws that open up. What you've got here is a small button and this long kind of bit of plastic here. So that long bit of plastic is actually where the spring is, as I will now show you. As you can see, it will shoot you in the face. Um, so to put it back in, you just slide it back in like that. I take it out occasionally to keep it lubed up, stop it rusting, etc. I've only ever had to do that once. It's still nice and shiny and new. And there we go. To turn it into a low cap, obviously, as I showed you before, there's a little uh, switch there. All you do is switch it over. Easy as that. And then you switch it back to be mid cap. Left and right. So yeah, that's literally it. So if you go to a Milsim game with these magazines, if they enforce a rule saying, oh, they must be low cap magazines, have no fear, your neutral magazines will keep you in check by allowing you to switch between the two with ease. And all you do is slide that back in, click into place, and then you add the Allen key again. It's really as easy as that. Chrono-wise, when you first get it, it'll be around the 300 mark. My rifle was around the 310 mark. That's um, That will wear down eventually. Mine now shoots about 290. That's probably because the spring's worn down. I've got a new rubber in there that kind of shot it back up. But um, that's kind of where you're looking at when it comes to the chronograph. And again, high cap magazines hold 500 rounds. Mid cap holds 120 or 30, depending on if you switch it over or not. But yeah. That's the magazines for you. Pretty cool, I'd say, you know. <laughs> you mean you've got a Milsim magazine and a standard skirmisher magazine, as I see it anyway, sat in the palm of your hand. Multifunctional and easy to use. Let's talk about dismantling the gun. Now, you only need one tool, which is this, an Allen key or a screwdriver. Not because you need to get into something and open up with the tool in question, just to pop open this pin just here. So, as you can see here, little black dot, that's the pin. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna put the Allen key or screwdriver or knife, fork, spoon, whatever you fancy, and you're just gonna push that down. Now, as you can see there, it's just dangling out. You just pull it out, don't pull it all the way out, mainly because you can't. But as you can see there, it's just sat there quite nicely. If I just hold it up to the camera like this and use my hand, again, it will just stick up just a little bit like that. And all you do is separate the two pieces. Now, the first time you do this, it's gonna be a bit tough, so just bear with me. Just make sure that's pulled out, and there we go. You've opened up your gun. So you just separate the two parts by just sliding it out. You literally, it's a sliding motion all the way out. And there you have access to pretty much, well, there's your electrical stuff. There's obviously the handguard, and this is how you get to your barrel. You've now just got access to your barrel. That is it. That's all, that's all you need to do. There's your hop-up chamber, uh, which is plastic. Uh, some people on, on the online forums I looked at, they, some people agree and disagree whether or not it's good or bad it's being plastic, but um, for the most part I think it's a good thing. If you do want to get it further into your hop-up chamber, all you do is just you take off that little red thing there, and there's a small pin here you just take out and then it just kind of falls apart. And then you just put it back together again, so try not to lose the parts uh, where, you know, so, you know, when you take it apart. Um, and you have two springs here as well. Don't lose them, you're going to need them. So all you do is put the springs back on, which I've accidentally put together. Yeah, don't do what I've just done and put the spring. Ooh. Don't do what I've done and just put the springs together, because then you obviously you'll have difficulty putting, taking them off again. So put the springs back in, and all you do is slide the barrel back into the handguard, like so. And there we are, it's back in there. Obviously there's a little bit of spring tension here, that's fine. Um, this is your lower receiver, like I said, there's your piston, goes into the motor where the batteries are. 
This is for an another video for another day because I don't go into the internals of the rifle. The internals are pretty good actually. I find them really, really good. And I, like I say, a year later, still going strong with no issues. So yeah, that's literally all I'm going to show you because again, for these videos, I'm just showing you some basic stuff. Now, there are a downside to this. There is a downside to this. Um, I'll take the barrel out again. You'll see here is where the flap of the... Obviously, where the shells would eject from the real steel version, where you get access to the hop chamber, which is just here. This metal part can fall out. There's also a red part within here, which I've actually managed to lose. That's my own fault. I was just fiddling with it. The red part here is what obviously flips us open and uh, pushes the bolt forward to cover up the hop-up chamber. Obviously, in the real seal version, that would obviously load the round. So make sure, if this does come out, and you have a look here, obviously you see it is a curved shape. The outside of the curve must go in this way. Um, also, make sure that the pointy end is, you know, is pointing that way. That is for where the lower receiver attaches to the top. So yeah, make sure that the single pointy end, just where my finger is, goes in first. So if it does fall out, you should have no hassle putting it back in. It just slots in really nicely. And like I say, there is a red part in there as well. Unfortunately, I can't show you because I was stupid enough to pull it out myself and then I lost it so I couldn't put it back together again. So just be careful. Those bits are just kind of free floating. I would say that's a bit of a downside, but I've yet to try other AR models, so maybe it's just part of uh, part of the AR design for Airsoft. I could be wrong. And all you do, put it back together again, is not put the upper receiver on first, or the lower receiver, I should say, is to actually put the barrel back in its uh, handguard. So all you do is slide it back in, obviously with where the... Um, oh, let's get this in first. There we go. So obviously where the BBs get fed, make sure it's pointing downwards. That's obvious stuff. So there we go. That's now back in. As so. And all you do is do the opposite. You slide it back in again. Now there will be a little bit of resistance. So as you can see here, it's still a little bit separated. All you do is give it a little bit of a knock, which is what I'm going to do here. So just... And then you close it up. As you can see, it's now a little bit more closed up. You might have to do it a few times, particularly again, as if you do it for your first time, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be quite stiff. And all you do is push the bolt back in, as I'm gonna show you. So just push that back in, and you're good to go again. So make sure that's in, and we just slotted it back in. So you just push it in, nothing special going on. Maybe give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure it's uh, in properly. But that's how you dismantle the gun to a basic level. That's how you get, a uh, get the barrel out and its hop-up chamber. So yeah really really easy to do happy with that and i didn't even need to use this i just used it to pull the pin out so um as dismantling goes it's a pretty basic thing i'm pretty sure the electrical stuff is a bit more complicated or it might be just basic to all electric rifles that's uh, so for another video for another day let's go over the functions of the gun now it's an ar rifle that is literally as standard as it gets nothing special is going on so, beginning with the crane stock, the extended stock, both works. Hold that down, easy as that. This is where you shoot your confetti. On this side here, you've got your fire selector. So you have here, safe, semi-automatic, fully automatic. Obviously on the other side where your finger would rest is uh, the magazine release to pull out your magazines. And here, you press that down and it will uh, cover up the hop unit, which I'll show you now. So, to get access to the hop up unit is really quite easy. You just pull the slide back, and as you can see, the hop up chamber is now accessible. This is just a basic hop up unit, you just literally turn the gear to how you see fit. Now, I've accidentally removed the part which shoots this back forward, so when you press this button here, the hop up chamber would then become covered again. I have to do this manually now, that's my own fault. I removed the part, that's my bad. But when you press the button, that will slide forward like that and lock into place. A neat little feature. And then you can close the flap or you can leave it open, whatever you prefer. Other than that though, it is basic AR stuff. There is nothing unique about the functions of this gun, but it does what it says in the tin. And to be honest with you, it does everything it needs to do perfectly fine. Let's talk about customization. Now, 
This rifle is already pre-upgraded, which means you've already got a tight ball barrel in there. You've got a decent hop-up chamber, hop-up units, hop-up rubbers, etc. in there. And the gears and the motors, I believe they are standard, but they could be up to date as of when that generation was made. So internally, maybe look at different barrels if you wish. You could probably leave it though, but you can do. The hop-up rubbers I would recommend changing because mine, even though it's stock, it worked well and then it wore down. So I got a Tokyo Maru on just to upgrade it. So this is one of the guns I would recommend upgrading as if and when it breaks. So yeah, definitely you can upgrade it internally, but it's all very much the basic stuff. Whether or not you can do things mechanically, I'll leave that for another video, only because I want to go over the basic stuff. You can get a metal hop-up chamber as well, but there is some debate whether or not it's actually effective. People think the plastic ones are better, some people think the metal ones are better. I stick with the plastic and it works pretty well for me. So I've done some research online, it's all very much conflicting for various different reasons. Mostly for air seal reasons, so I'll leave you guys to look that up yourself because it just seems to be back and forth, back and forth. The only thing I would say is when you do get your rifle, get a very thin bit of tape and wrap it around where the rubber and the barrel ends, or you know, where the rubber ends and where the barrel is, just to get that perfect air seal. Beyond that, upgrade it when it breaks or just leave it stock because it is pretty good as it is. Go on to external upgrades, this is the tricky part. Obviously you've got no under barrel rails or side rails which means you're going to be a little bit limited on what you can do. Now it works for me because I can get all my cameras on and my batteries and I've got a scope for it as well. Beyond that, you're not going to get a grenade launcher on there unless it's a small one. You can get a grip but a bit impractical. You can get a bipod. But um, it's an assault rifle, would you want a bipod? Some people do, I'm not judging, I've got a grip and a bipod. But um, yeah, you are a little bit limited on the side and underneath, but um, scope wise you can do pretty much whatever you like because there's a full rail on the top. Going on to kits, um, I'm not aware of any kits, done some research online. You can HBA it, that's all standard, but um, there's no real dedicated kits to this rifle, it is just what it is. So. In summary, internally upgrade it when it breaks or do a few adjustments like I've already described. Externally, it's very basic stuff. You can have a very basic looking rifle, but you can still do things, just not under barrel attachments. And uh, if you guys want a HPA, you certainly can. Let's talk about its build quality. So, is it a delicate gun? No, it is a very robust gun. It's not going to break on you anytime soon. It's certainly not going to snap on you. The only breakage part I could find is probably the pin here where you dismantle it. And it's not going to break on you. It just won't. It hasn't broken me in a year and I've thrown this rifle about. Ah! Ah! Decided to go check the blue tub at the gauntlet. See if I can try and defend it at least. I'm gonna get a pistol, my gun's just got clogged and shit. The only thing I have noticed is there's a screw here or a bolt or whatever you want to call it where the stock is attached to the main receiver. You might have to tighten that every so often because the stock can come a bit loose. Beyond that though, nothing's gonna break in you. It's, it's a very robust gun, nothing's gonna break. If it does get broken, as I said before, you can just upgrade it as you break it, new barrels, etc. For the stock items though, are they easy to get a hold of? Yeah, they're very easy to get a hold of. They're surprisingly easy to get a hold of, in fact. They're just everywhere. So uh, they've even got up little upgrade parts or downgrades, depending on how you guys view things. So like I say, you can get a metal hop-up chamber. The motors are easy to get your hands on, the gear boxes and stuff. Different stocks, you can exchange the stock for another one. It's just, even if you can't find the right part, you can always exchange it for another one anyway. So yeah, if something does break, you can get it repaired very, very easily. Talking about the expenses, it's about a low to mid range gun, so it's going to cost you about 200 to 250 pounds, depending on where you go and buy it. So, um, yeah, no, it's not that expensive rifle. The attachments are like the magazines here. Um, I actually got these from Patrol Base. They did a special offer where you buy four, you get a fifth free, so they're about 10 pounds each. But um, once you've outfitted all your magazines, really, it's um, yeah, you've got it all, really. I mean, it comes with iron sights and stuff, which you can detach and add to other rifles, which is quite neat. But um, yeah, it's not an expensive rifle. This is about as standard as I get, really, uh, when it comes to definitely for a rifle that's considered a starter rifle. You get what you pay for, but um, it's actually quite good quality. So um, 
The build quality of this rifle is, it's pretty much up there. It really is up there. So um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. This gun's gonna get you through a firefight and into the next one, most definitely. Let's talk about Nupral. Uh, Nupral is a very large manufacturer. They sell quite a lot of stuff. So the Delta series line of rifles, they sell the Romeo series of AKs, they have their own pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles, their own ammunition, they, have, they also sell magazines for each of the guns, but they also sell things like grips and bipods, like my grip bipod, they sell plate carriers, helmets, uh, battle belts, so um, yeah, they've, they've got everything you guys will need to start off your airsoft, airsofting uh, hobby, your career, whatever you want to call it. So um, yeah, quality of gear it's pretty good yeah it's good it's it's high quality gear would i say it's the best gear i think there are other manufacturers who do it a little bit better but it's certainly not bad quality i've yet to find a fault in their in their uh, in their gun cases for example their helmets are pretty nice and light so uh, yeah if you guys are looking for just some basic gear go to them they've got the quality they've got the goods and like i say i use their rifle as the main battle rifle yet with very little fault um, apart from obviously the semi-automatic becoming a bit burnt out, but beyond that, yeah, they've got good quality products, so check them out guys, because if you want something half decent, that's where I would go. Let's talk about why I bought the gun. My WE L85 was my great love when it worked, the only one of two times of when it did work. So I literally threw it away, and I mean literally threw it away, I sold it off spare parts and that was it, the rest of it was in the bin. So um, yeah, this is what I was left with, uh, well just nothing, a pistol, my Tokyo Marui P226. So when I went to Combat UK, I looked up uh, which rifles I wanted to buy, I, I went into, short, into the shop, and um, there was a spokes lady from Neutral there, as I've described earlier. Uh, she introduced me to this line of rifles. Uh, within a week, I was sold. Now, I actually already tried out a Neutral rifle. It was the M4 Sop mod, uh, which is now Crow's weapon. So I tried it out already because all the internals are the same, and I was pretty impressed with it. It's been described, as always, Raven describes it as a really good starting gun because it's already pre-upgraded, or a backup gun. I use it as a primary. And I've met a few other players who also use it at primaries because they are they just they just work and they run really really well. And with the high amount of extras you can get, like the mid cap magazines, high caps, the grips, bipods, whatever, everything you'll need for this rifle is being sold to you by the company. So you can just go to them, or obviously you can go to other places, but everything is there ready for you just sat there. So I bought the rifle. I put on my old attachments, hence why the scope's a bit different. I bought another bipod grip, magazines, I outfitted it. And to this day, the only thing that's gone wrong is the fire selector being burnt out, so single fire is a bit tricky, and I lost the magazine one day. That's it. There's nothing wrong with this rifle. A year, a year going, I've not had to look at the internals, the motors, or the or the gears or anything. I've changed the hopper rubber once, which you kind of do with most rifles anyway. Yeah, that's why I bought it, because I knew it would be a very robust, reliable gun. And to this day, it's still shooting. So yeah, if you guys are looking at buying this rifle, this is what I think of it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And like I say, leave some love and a sub. I'll see you guys next time.